Good evening, everybody. Rodney Holmstrom here. I'll let some folks uh, jump on here. Looking forward to seeing everybody on here. I'll give folks a second to jump on here. Hopefully my connection is good. I'm hoping. Uh, look for some folks here. I see Ron jumping on here. There's some folks jumping on here. Happy Friday, the 17th. Can you believe it's already the 17th? I see David, David Smith, lots of folks jumping on here. Hey, Ron, good to see you, my friend. And Marty, hey, uh, if you would, uh, tell us where you're uh, from. Tell us your name. We have a cool thing about these is, is I'm not the only one on here. I just want to remind you of that. I'm the only one you're seeing, but we've got state representatives. We have regional directors. We have national team that are watching in too, and, and they're watching for your questions uh, as well. So uh, don't be afraid to ask your question. Tell us where you're from. If you feel safe about doing that, don't, you don't have to. And um, see some folks. Uh, hey, Jennifer. Wilson and uh, Ronnie Bennett, Alice from Lansing. We've got a training conference coming up in Lansing in March. We're excited about that. Suzette, good to see you guys. So, hey, I want to um, just jump on here with you guys. Um, I don't know about you, but it seems like uh, I was kind of, I'll look for some questions here. But as I kind of think about um, what what um, the new year is bringing in, there's all kinds of uh, these new commitments that we've made. And, and this is kind of about the year that I kind of hear people getting a little bit discouraged and thinking, you know, man, I've failed. I, I've, I'm not quite where I want to be. And I, and I just want to encourage you while I'm waiting for some questions here. Um, you know, don't, don't get discouraged. Here's what we want to do. I don't know about you. I struggle with perfectionist <laughs> tendencies, and and um, man, those perfectionism perfectionism is kind of a beast. I remember Brene Brown talking about perfectionism. She said that where there's perfectionism, shame is riding shotgun, and fear is riding in the back seat. Now, just imagine driving down the road with your perfectionist lens. And uh, you got someone in the in the passenger seat saying, you're not enough. See, you're unlovable. You're unacceptable. No one likes you. You're never going to make it. And you got uh, fear in the back seat saying, oh, don't make a mistake. What if you fail? What are people going to think of you? And he's, it's just this vicious cycle. And so when we're in that perfect, perfectionism uh, lens, um, I think that we become very rigid I was sharing this with my ministry last week in the denial lesson. We see we see this uh, we, ugliness in our life, and we try to cover it up, and uh, we try to outdo the negative with good. Man, that's an exhausting place, isn't it? Um, and so I want to encourage you: don't don't be in that rigid place. Walk in grace. Give yourself grace. If you if you messed up. That's where God can step in and say, hey, that didn't work out, did it? But how can I help you? How can I come alongside you and, and help you uh, in this? And that's just a beautiful picture of a loving father. I always imagine with my kids, when my kids were little and they were uh, learning how to clean their room, the goal was that they would clean their room, right? Um, so as a parent, if, if I had that perfectionistic tendency I would just kind of just go clean their room and they never learned responsibility. They never learned how to clean their room. But no, a loving father, I had to learn how to how to get down on my knees and start, hey Scott, uh, pick up the toys and say, hey, this is where your Legos go. This is where your cars go. And I love that we have a father that will meet us where we are. And he knows when he has to get down on his knees and kind of help us and teach us how to do things. And then as we begin to mature, uh, we know how to take responsibility and we know how to clean our room and we know how to do what we need to do, uh, but that's the maturing process. And so give yourself some grace. Know that the Father's showing grace to you. He knows where you are and he knows what you're capable of. And he's going to be there right. We don't start yelling at our kids when they can't get their Legos put in their bin when they're just learning how uh, uh, to pick up their toys. No, we say, that's okay. 
and we teach them. It's all right. This is goes. No, this goes over here. No, come on over here. And then as we start learning and growing, then in our maturing process, he kind of meets us where we are. And I love that. That's a loving uh, father. So if you're January 17th and you're thinking, oh, here, here's where shame sets in. Well, you've already messed up. You might as well just keep messing up. There, there's, it's not going to do any good. So don't listen uh, to that uh, to that lie. Pick up where you left off and know you have a loving father that will meet you where you are. So I'm trying to catch your questions here. This is kind of hard to do by myself. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Marnie's not behind the lens. Marnie, is there any? Oh, she's not behind my lens. So I, I'm just messing with you guys. So uh, I'm going to see if I can answer some of these. Sean says, just started a step study with my CR home group this week. And on the first lesson, Sean, congratulations. If you don't know what that is, uh, there's four workbooks that you walk through in Celebrate Recovery that really just start uh, at uh, kind of peel on the layer of the onion. So we have eight principles. The first three principles are kind of walking through this I give up stage. I give up whatever I walked in here with this uh, trying to manage this on my own. And as we grow through that, and we do grow through that, and there's a reason they're principles, it takes time to walk through them. Then we get to the cleanup phase where we start facing the stuff that's got um, our life kind of poisoned and in a mess. And God begins to show those things, not in a shameful way, but in an honest, revealing way so that we can begin to, to give those to him and, and clean up our heart and our lives so that we can have the freedom that he, long, he longs for us to have and we long to have. And then uh, when we get into principle six, we start the makeup phase where we start making up with the relationships that have been destroyed uh, in our life. And then ultimately we grow up in principles uh, seven and eight where we reserve a time with God and we learn new healthy habits and we start serving and giving back. I mean, it's not about us anymore. So Sean, congratulations for starting that give up part of your recovery. That What a great uh, step uh, that will be. All right. Uh, let's see, see, see. Let's see. Richard says, how badly do you want freedom from your your hurts, habits, and hangups, or you get out of it what you put into it. That's so, so important. I think it, I was just sharing with my team. We just finished our Celebrate Recovery out here, and I was, I was sharing, uh, giving the blue chip uh, talk with them. And here's what I shared with them. You know, the, the mindset when we walk into Celebrate Recovery is if I could just have freedom from this, just take the shackles off, and my life will be great. And, and while that sounds good, that, that, that's obviously an, an improvement in our life. I think the reality is we don't just want to remove the shackles. Have you ever known somebody that has sobriety, but they're just as miserable as they were? I don't want to be, uh, I don't want the shackles just to be removed. I don't want just sobriety from the, the, the addictions. Uh, mine was drugs and alcohol. I praise God that I don't have those. But, but if he only took those away and didn't help me uh, deal with the unmet emotional needs and, and the relational needs underneath that, then I would just shift them to other things. And, and a lot of times we only remove the negative stuff, take the shackles off. We walk out of the prison. We don't see the bars. We're not eating the prison food. We're not around the prison guards anymore. So it feels like we're free. And in some sense we are, but inside we're just as much a prisoner as we were before. And so I want to not just uh, have the shackles removed. I want to become the person uh, that Jesus has called me to be. And that's only because of the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did for me and truly turning my life and my will over to him that my identity, walking in that identity, um, as I've said to a couple sponsees recently, we do really good appreciating the, the adjective meaning of grace. It's unmerited favor, right? That's pretty cool, and we need to celebrate that. But don't miss the noun meaning of grace. And that means that we have access to the power of God to help us face whatever um, we're facing. And that means we're going to go back to the source, and we hang out with the source. Guess what he does? He changes our choices. He changes our behaviors, and he brings that freedom. But it's because we have a relationship with him. So... So yeah, what, how, how badly do you want to change? But remember who's the one that does the changing is Jesus Christ. So I'm trying to catch some of your questions here. 
See Megan jumping on here, ministry leader at uh, Saddleback. Good to see you, Scott. Yeah, just plugging that Trinity Church in Lansing, Michigan. I was just talking about that. We just got that one online on the 21st of March. Make sure you sign up um, for that. Um, let's see, at what step in the step study should we make sure that no one is using? Great question. I think, I think here's the reality. There's different levels, and, and we were training our leaders recently about this. Um, we were talking about relapse. Um, every relapse is different. And man, I think if, you've, if I've learned anything in recovery, there, people in recovery can be very black and white. Just tell me this. If it's this, then it's this. It's not always a black and white situation. So it depends on the, the level of, of the relapse. Um, and so I drank some punch at a wedding. I didn't realize it was alcohol, that kind of thing. Or I slipped, but I'm back on, you know, that kind of thing. I want to show grace with that. But here's the thing. I want to think about the participant. And my lens that I'm always going to look at is I'm talking to them. I want, th I want to make them a part of that decision. Is this, is this moving forward, especially if you're going to be going through step four, is that going to be more harmful uh, or good to you? Or maybe you just need to go to some meetings. Maybe you need to hit some traditional meetings. Maybe you need to go to open share and kind of get some sobriety under your belt, especially with substance abuse. I think that's important. I think with some other issues, it may not be as big of a deal to jump right into a step study. Sub serious uh, substance abuse could, you may need some meetings under your belt. That's why we say that 90 meetings in 90 days. So I, I would just make sure, make them a part of that, that solution. Don't make it, I'm the, I'm the leader and you're getting kicked out of the group. We, we don't want to uh, cause more damage, um, but do what's best and then try to uh, get them pointed into a, a good, good plan and walk them through that. When co-leading step studies, um, should should we be sharing our inventories each time we lead? Great question. Here's what I've learned in my recovery. Sometimes there, there are things that will come up. Um, I don't know about you, but my fourth or fifth step study, God revealed some things. And here's what I believe. I believe he revealed them to me at a later date because he knew I wasn't ready for it. And that's always a good reminder that sometimes we have a fear. Well, what if I forget something when I'm doing my inventory? What if I don't remember every single detail, everything that I did wrong, everything that happened to me? And, I, and that's that perfectionistic thing. Just whatever God brings to your heart, share that. And just trust that God is working on you. He's maturing you. And as you grow and he feels like you're ready, he may bring some things that you might have repressed, that you had forgotten. Sometimes we see that with abuse. Sometimes we think see that with deep trauma. Just say, God, I'm going to trust you. And if it's this time you reveal something great. But in my fourth or fifth step study, he reveals something new um, that, that I had to put down on my inventory. And I shared it with my sponsor. And so I think it's good to explore your heart and make sure there's nothing new. But, but honestly, most of it, if we're doing our daily inventory at the latter parts of the principle, uh, principles, the eight principles in that principle seven, um, we probably are hitting it pretty good. Uh, that's what we should be doing to kind of keep our side of the street clean. But don't discount the power of going through and answering those questions. That God might reveal something to you. It's probably my first inventory was like that thick. Uh, it's not that thick now when I lead a step study, uh, but... I want to at least lean in and stay curious. God, is there something new? And at least ask that question. You never know. He might reveal something uh, uh, to your heart. Hey, Patty from Tacoma. You know, I was born in Tacoma, Washington. You believe that? Nine years clean and sober one day at a time. Patty, I'm so proud of you. Good job. That that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of faith and leaning into the, the one that can bring the healing. Congratulations. You guys see some people showing you some love. Let's see if I can scroll down here. I apologize. It's kind of awkward I'm on my iPhone here. Um, I don't know what Cheryl's question is there. Hey, Michelle from California. Let's see. Yeah, Mac kind of, yep, he kind of said the same thing I just said. So, man, maybe I got an answer right. That's good. Um, let's see. Tina from Ohio, Ohio. Um, Thanks for that great word. I appreciate your encouragement. 
Um, wondering, let's see, Randy, all the way from Jackson, Florida, dialing in. He's live. We're live with Randy. I'm just kidding. Wondering how we deal with growth beyond our current leaders. Uh, we are shy leaders to handle. Let's see if I can see the rest of this. It's not letting me. I'm just going to assume what the rest. I don't know why it won't show me the rest, but um, yeah, how do we grow? So <clears throat> I think it's interesting. Number one, and we forget this sometimes, we need to be praying. We need to pray. Pray, 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 pray. And we're kind of in that phase too. We just launched a new Celebrate Recovery down the road from us in, in uh, one of our sister churches. And now we're, we're in the same uh, boat, kind of looking at one up north of us that's going to be building a new church. And, and we're going to be starting to Celebrate Recovery there. And so we're trying to raise up leaders that live in that area that are coming to our Celebrate Recovery. And here's the thing. I think we it seems so elementary, uh, obviously prayer, but are you asking people, and not just you as a ministry leader, challenge your leaders, your step study leaders, that when you start getting into the end of that third and the end of that fourth book, put it on your step study group leaders to start saying, guys, I need you to be finding tomorrow's leader. And look somebody in the eye. There's something powerful to look them in the eye and say, hey, I see you in you leadership. God can use you. And, and, and God will equip you. He will, he will equip you uh, in this. But could you, you know, you walk through a year of healing. Could you give me one year, one year to pour into someone else so they can experience and taste what you have tasted? Don't be afraid to ask people, uh, but make sure you're praying. There's a lot more there I could talk about, but I want to get some other questions. Um, Michelle says, we're a new CR. Just celebrate our first year. Congratulations. Two members of our team resigned. That's sad, and it's happened to me multiple times. Um, but don't get discouraged. Don't grow weary in doing good, right? There's a lot of people out there that need need to hear uh, your hope, and so don't get discouraged by that. I've been doing this for 15 years now, and I've seen a lot of people come and go, and the hardest thing early on was to not take it personal and to not just let it devastate me. But... I just knew that if somebody was leaving, God had somebody on the radar, and I just need to trust him and know that he's going to send me somebody. So don't be discouraged, sister. Um, Rachel from Lima, Ohio. Michelle saying hello to Scott. Hello, Scott again. Uh, Ronnie celebrating six years on January 23rd. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. we got Sarah from Des Moines. When people don't show up for step study night, should the leaders go ahead and do that lesson anyway? Great question. Here's what, number one, when you're starting a, a step study group, make sure, this is why I don't start my step study diving into questions um, the first night. I give it two weeks to talk about that. One thing I do is ask them, what's your level of motivation? One to 10, you're most motivated 10. Uh, what brings you here and, and, and what's your motivation number and why? And we go around the room, we share that. And then after we're doing that, it's so cool to kind of think about how motivated am I? Sometimes it's six, six and up type thing. But then we talk about what does it mean to be motivated? And one of those things is attendance. It's doing my homework, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I would say most definitely, please do the lesson. But you need to immediately call that, that person that didn't show up. Usually when we take like a five minute break in the middle of it, I'm texting them saying, are you okay? What's up? Where are you? <laughs> I want to train them. You got to talk to me. Don't just not show up. And then I'm going to reach out to them. And if they keep missing, uh, then that's a conversation. Hey, one of one of my familiar conversations is: Is this a good time? Is this a good season for you to be doing this? Because you really need to be here. And it feels like maybe this is not a good season. Sometimes I'll see people perk up and go, "Oh no, I'm in. I'm motivated." Or they'll go, "You know what? You're right." I'm just kind of going through the motions. So um, please do the lesson regardless. Unless nobody shows up, then maybe you say, hey, let's punt until next week. Hopefully that's not happened too often. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get some more questions. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, this week I had someone ask if they could FaceTime a step study member now that they don't have transportation. Now, Here's pulling on the old codependency heartstrings, right? 
man, it would be so nice. They could keep going with us. But guys, this is one of those DNA issues, okay? Hear this clearly. We cannot have online groups, and that would classify and qualify as an online group. And I'm so sorry. And I've had to look, guys, I know you're going out of town on business, but we really can't Skype you in. We can't FaceTime you in because here's the thing. Even if you swear on a Bible, nobody is around. I can be sitting there in the group and go, okay, I believe him. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what if somebody does walk by? Or what if somebody overhears and now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paused in my own sharing and I'm probably not going to go as deep because I'm, I have this little bug in the back of my, my head that's saying, what if, what if, what if. And so it's just better. And it's a DNA issue. That's, that's a non-negotiable. It's better just to be honest with them and say, I know you got to go out of town. I hate that. Do the homework. Share it with me or another brother when you get back into town. But let's pick up next week when you're here. But if I got someone that can't do transportation, I would much rather try to figure something out where someone can go to their home and maybe they just one-on-one -on -one work through the principles together or maybe they write their answers out and they text it to me or something or we do something on the phone. We just get creative with that. It's not the best practice. It's not the best solution, but it's better than nothing. But we can't do online uh, FaceTime. I hope that helps. That's clear for you. It's so hard when people can't. Maybe you try to find someone that can give them a ride. I don't know. We, there's creative things that we can do. Uh, let's see. Is this CR live session every week? If so, when does it start? It always starts at 8 p.m. Um, Central Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. That would be um, um, 7, oh gosh, <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm trying really hard to do this math in my head. I hope I'm getting the time zones right. But 6 p.m. Pacific, and then you can do the math from there. But yeah, every week, um, sometimes you'll have uh, other people on here. Most of the time, you're going to have one of the bakers on here, Johnny Baker, Pastor Johnny Baker, and uh, or uh, Pastor John and Cheryl Baker, co-founders of Celebrate Recovery. Sometimes they bring in Johnny Baker's wife, uh, and they'll bring in some other folks like Megan, the ministry leader there at uh, Saddleback. So, but yeah, we meet every week, 6 p.m. Pacific. So, um, I'm at the right, I have to see, I think you're talking to somebody else there. I'm sorry. I'm, this is my inner thoughts coming out. See, my wife tells me all the time, just because it's here doesn't mean it needs to come here. Sometimes when I'm teaching, I, I mess it up. Hey, Nicole. Um, let's see. If I can find another question. Great questions, you guys. You're doing great. Um, Joey, praying for you, brother. I hope you can get connected with some people. Don't try to do this alone. You cannot do it alone, brother. Uh, I'm praying that you get connected with some people around you. At least, if there's not a Celebrate Recovery, connect with your church. Um, and it would be good for for people to be with you in this journey. Go to some traditional meetings. Don't Don't try to do this alone, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, are we doing on time here? Uh, we got a couple minutes. Um, so don't you love just this blank noise? Um, the hardest part is walking through those doors the first time. Trust that it will be okay and the support team will follow. Amen. That's so good. Um, all right. Well, not seeing any uh, questions pop up here. Sounds like, and I love this, you guys are answering each other's questions. But, but hey, um, remember what I said about that perfectionism. Um, don't, um, don't be rigid. Don't be hard on, on yourself. Here's the thing. When you're hard on yourself, you're hard on others. When we have these high expectations for ourselves, we kind of transfer that to other people. And then uh, it kind of pushes people away because people don't like that rig rigidity. Um, instead, we, we stay at this place of curiosity and grace and mercy and uh, kind of exploring uh, ways that we can learn and grow as we make mistakes, as we stumble, as we um, kind of hit some roadblocks sometimes. And God, I need you to help me and meet me in this place. So. 
All right, guys. Well, hey, uh, don't forget, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, we do this every single Friday night on Facebook Live on the Celebrate Recovery page. And go click like on that. Uh, hey, share this video if you would. Uh, you never know who might need to hear something. They may be in a tough spot and they hear this and they go, oh my gosh, what is Celebrate Recovery? Uh, please share this. I'd love to get a bunch of shares on this and we'll be posting this to our YouTube Celebrate Recovery official page as well. So hope you have a, a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be sure to check out the training conferences. Can't wait to see some folks in Houston. And then we got San Francisco, Seattle coming up, Atlanta, uh, Lansing, Michigan, D.C., Washington, D.C. We got lots of training conferences coming up. We have tons of state reps, Broken Chains, uh, the Landing and Celebration Place team, uh, the national team. We're all going to be there. So we, we can't wait to see you uh, on the road. Come up and say hi. And thank you guys so much for watching tonight. Uh, one of the bakers uh, should be back next week. And I know you'll look forward to seeing them. So thanks for uh, having a great combo tonight. And God bless you guys. Keep going strong. God loves you and so do we. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.